Okay, bingo, we're back. I'm Jay Fidel. Welcome to Community Matters on ThinkTech. Our show today is called AARP Hawaii Disrupt Aging at the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. That's lumping it all together, all the strains. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about disrupt aging. It's a call to shape the future on aging. Our guests on the show are Jackie Boland from AARP and Mike Malahan, who is an author who writes about a lot of stuff and travels a lot. Okay, when, when challenge outdated beliefs about what it's like to be aging. And uh, we're going to just generally look and see what happens uh, to seniors and to the world in general as they perceive seniors. And we're going to try to make some greater sense of that, not only here and now, but at the Hawaii Book and Music Festival coming soon. Welcome to the show, Jackie Bolin. Thank you for having me. Mike Malahan, welcome, welcome to the show. Delighted to be here, Jay. Yeah, great. So, first of all, what is AARP? AARP is a membership organization for people 50 and older. We advocate, educate, and provide service for people 50 plus and their families. All right. And how big are you? Well, here in Hawaii, we have about 148,000 members, and nationally, we have about 37 million. 37 million. Mm -hmm. That makes you a very powerful organization, no? Yes. So what are your initiatives nationally? Well, of course, our big push is <clears throat> currently to protect health care for older adults, including mm. protecting Medicare for those who have paid into it throughout their lives and mm. making sure that the key pieces of the Affordable Care Act um, that benefit older people stay in place, yeah. such as you know, not allowing discrimination based on age and pre-existing conditions, right. um, making sure that people have essential health benefits. Your job's not over, you know. No. It's still in play. <laughs> I really keep reading about attempts by some members of Congress to undo those things. And uh, you took a position on this thing with the uh, American Health uh, Care, Affordable Health Care Act recently, huh? We didn't like it. <laughs> well, you succeeded in that regard. <laughs> Good for you. You know, we need you. You know that. I do, and we can't do it alone. We need everybody that's in our membership and everybody that's connected to them. Yeah, good work, Jackie. Okay, and you're an author, actually, Mike. That's right. And you've written about a lot of things, traveled a lot of places. You've done a lot. You, you are an eternally active guy, sounds like to me. Well, I've been very, very lucky. I retired from the corporate world when I was 59, and most of my relatives were dead by 60, and I thought I might be joining them. Uh, but I looked at their lifestyle and made some adaptions, and here I am at age 74, still kicking. You're a young man. Look at him. Can we, do, can we zoom in on Mike? Let's just take a look at him well, closely. today I feel Smile young. at the camera. You can see how young Mike right, looks. Right, right. I get home and take Not my nap. Not as young as Jackie, but still very right. young. Yeah, yeah, very I lucky. have makeup on. So yeah. you visited 200 countries. Over what period of time is that? Well, I started with um, Mexico and Nigeria in 1960. 66, never dreaming oh, that someday it would be 200. Sounds like Peace Corps. This Peace reminds Corps. me of Peace Corps. Peace Corps days. You got the bug when you were in the Peace Corps, it, didn't uh, you? I had a, a gene, a curiosity gene <laughs> I didn't know I had, and that released it. Yeah, the Peace Corps is a wonderful, or has been, I, yeah. I don't know how active it is today. Oh, but still active. In those days when you and I were young, younger. It meant something, people. yeah, I heard the call, I heard the call, <laughs> Kennedy's well, call. Well, it was Kennedy's call, and, yeah. and I feel, uh, and, and this is sort of part of our whole discussion, um, that, um, you know, uh, that part of being a citizen in this country is to be a citizen diplomat. Part of being a citizen is, in this country is to do public service, national service of one kind or another so that you, you, know, you make contributions to the greater good, the common good, and to the nation in general. And the Peace Corps was and is a wonderful way yeah. to do that, I think. Yeah, and it was, that was at a time when people looked up to America. I'd go into small villages in Nigeria. There'd be pictures of Martin Luther King and Jack Kennedy. Um, amazing. Make your heart sing. It did. It yeah. did. Yeah. So why did you get out? Well, you spend your two years, and you're out. It's a two-year deal. Okay. And then I went into the corporate world for 40 years and then finally um, came back to retirement. Yeah, so there was a moment where you said to yourself, Mike, I, Mike, i got to get out of the corporate world. Yes. i gotta, I got I to get into something you know, right. that, that suits my, my spirituality or whatever. Right. What, what was that moment like? You know, I always dreamed in my heart I was a writer. But, you know, writers... Most of them don't make any money. So I thought that was the road to poverty. So I was fortunate in my corporate days. My last couple of years were good, and I was able to afford to retire and follow um, my passion yeah. and get in shape. I was way overweight when I retired, so yeah, I was able to talk, yeah. get, get on that. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of books have you been writing? Well, I've wrote, 
Well, I've written a lot of books, but two that are published. One was Making Millions of Direct Sales. That was 12 years ago. Still get royalties, McGraw-Hill. Really? And last year, I published Picture Bride. It's part of a trilogy honoring the 442 and the 100 that fought in Europe. And as I wrote that book and I visited the battlefields in Italy and France, I started thinking about the mom and dads. So that little backstory became Picture Bride. And that's a novel all by itself. It starts in Kyushu in 1905 and ends the night before Pearl Harbor. Great, oh, great story, gosh. How did you connect up with this guy? I was lucky. Um, <laughs> Roger Jelnick, the president of the Hawaii Book and Music Festival, connected us. Okay. Does that mean that Mike is in the Book and Music Festival? You're going to speak there as a panel or what? I'll be on a panel, and I will have my own booth. <laughs> All right, both. Whoa, whoa. So this, this is a good time to talk about the Book and Music Festival sure. and what it means to AARP. Tell us sure. about that. Well, for the first time since I've been working for AARP in Hawaii, our national CEO and author of the book Disrupt Aging is I know coming who that to is. Hawaii. That's Joanne Jenkins. Yes. Picture, picture, book, book, picture. Okay, there we go. Yes. Right. So this she, is her book recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people find this to be a pretty provocative book with some interesting ideas. And I thought the Book and Music Festival would be a great time for people here in Hawaii to start talking about those ideas. Yeah. So she'll be coming out to keynote on Disrupt Aging. And then on Sunday, we'll have seven panels. Of Sunday, what day? So give us that's, some dates. Oh, so she'll be knows. out on um, May 6th, which mm -hmm. is a Saturday, okay. keynoting at the Book and Music Festival. Okay, which is in behind City Hall there. Right, the is? Fosse yeah. Civic Grounds. Yeah. And then we'll have a booth both days, but on Sunday, we're sponsoring a Disrupt Aging Pavilion. So we have seven different panel presentations with Hawaii's thought leaders and people who embody the concepts that are in Disrupt Aging. And it's just a really good chance for people to see it personalized and to ask questions. So it comes together. So um, this is, you know, this is, it's for thinking people, I think, is what, what I mm -hmm. get from you. And the question is, um, you know, what, what is the challenge about Disrupt Aging? Uh, what is her book around, if you don't mind telling him a little about sure, that. Sure, sure. And, um, you know, where are we, including AARP, including Mike and his writing and thinking, where are we going on new concepts around aging for, what, what did I say before the show began, aging is not only for the seniors, it's for <laughs> everyone. <laughs> you can quote me on Think Tech. Okay. Sure. So what is it? Well, let's think about the 50th birthday, because before we came in, Mike <laughs> brought that up. So many people will say to me, oh. I got that letter in the mail, I turned 50. And ARP saying, you know what, you should be celebrating that moment. At no point in history has 50 been the middle until now, <laughs> right? So you make it to 50 and you now have about 30 more years. When yeah, you're in your yeah, 20s wood, and yeah. you're looking to 50, you're excited about those 30 years. Yeah, yeah. And because of all these advances in health, um, we think you could be excited about 30 years after 50 and disrupt aging is really about how do you line up for that? How do you make the most of it? Get rid of your fear, overcome the stereotypes and set up the systems that we need to have in place so that you can thrive. There's no ideal disrupt aging life, but there are people who are courageous enough right now to be showing how we can live that way. Yeah, so it's a double entendre. I'm beginning to get it. It's like, you know, a disruptive technology. It means this isn't like it was before. It's a different idea, and we're going to change your way of thinking. When we say disrupt, we mean we're going to jostle you. We're going to, we're going to change you somehow. We're going to do it different. We're going to do it different. Yeah. And, um, you know, it may seem a little bit, a little bit you know, shake up, um, but it's okay because sometimes you have to shake up in order to go maybe a different direction. So let's talk about your, your experience at 50 or 59, whenever it was. Um, you had a disruptive experience. All of a sudden, you saw aging differently than you had seen it before. You saw it as a productive time, a writing time, a thinking time, a philosophical growth part of your life. How was that? You know, I think of it as, from about age 60, the age of uncertainty. You never know if today is your last day, but you live it like you got 20 or 30 more years. So you set up to age 80. Well, I'm 74. My horizon is 90. So I live every day as if I'm going to live to 90, knowing that something could happen tomorrow. And, you know, every year that you stay alive and healthy is one more year the doctors come up with a new pill to keep you alive one more year. So but I live why? a life like I'm going to live for a long time. But why? Why do you need this longevity? What is, what is in it for you oh, to have this longevity? That's, you know, that's a great question. Nobody's asked me before. I think you have to 
have a compassion. There's things you want to do. You don't want to die right now because you got all this thing to do. I still got places to travel, books to write. I'm, I'm you know, active with the Rotary Club. There's always something I want to do, a book I haven't read. So I think that's, that's part of it. It's probably in that book. You have to have a purpose for being here tomorrow. Yeah, but you know what I get at? There's another element here I think we should dwell on for a minute. It's not just for you. That's what I get out of this. It's not just for you. And I don't think you're talking about just for me, you know, it's me, me, me. It's not right. really that at all because you're doing things for others. You're sharing, sharing, okay? And maybe sharing is part of this. Just tell me yes or no. Yes. All right, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes or no, you got it. <laughs> so, Jackie, well, you know, what are we doing to try to disrupt? I mean, what is the model, the different model that you'd like to see evolving out of this conversation? Well, I think, first of all, um, I can't remember who it was that said youth is wasted on the young, right? Or, um, or aging is not just for seniors. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, well, I think the different model is um, if people can plan ahead for those longer years, then they can live in choice about how they spend them. And it may be that they'll be of service to their community, but um, the big opportunity is that they can embrace something that gives them a sense of purpose. Whereas a lot of times when we're younger, we're scrambling to put a roof over our heads, feed our kids, just pay the bills, pay off our college debt. We don't feel that freedom that if we can just get past those aging stereotypes and realize if we have invested our money, saved for retirement, we have a lot of opportunity to explore. And older adults actually with all those years of experience behind them, if we could harness that for the good of the community, you know, community. I heard you say um, community. Yeah, yeah, the community, but just the betterment of the world, that's a huge treasure that we have. So I think one shift is to say, you know what, a lot of people view aging as a burden to society and there are some challenges that come with it, but there is also just this big potential resource right there. Um, the second thing is to look at money. Um, I have so many friends who don't plan for the future, who don't believe that Social Security will be there for them and somehow seem to think that they're going to die when they hit 50. And we know it's not true. So if we know it's not true, how are they going to plan so that they can have those choices in the second half of their life? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And how are we going to plan so we can discuss this and understand the challenges and the overcoming the challenges in the second half of this show? That's why we take a break <laughs> right now. Aloha Kako, I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. Hi, my name is Seymour Kazimersky. I have a show called Seymour's World on Think Tech Hawaii. Our show is about opening minds and facilitating conversations. To tell you the truth, I have no idea what we're going to be talking about. I have no idea who our guests are going to be, but I guarantee you we're going to have lots and lots of fun. Aloha from Seymour's World. My name is Calvin Griffin, host of Military in Hawaii, which airs here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 11 a.m. Please join us. We'll be talking about issues concerning our military, veterans community, and other related issues that concern all of us. Bingo, we're back. And we have two things to cover before we sleep. Number one is the problem with money, and the other one is the problem with health, including mental health, okay? Which one do you want to tackle first? How about money? We talked about during the break. Well, well money, I talk about 401ks. A lot of people, 401ks retirement, and they want to dip in temporarily. And they forget that if at age 30, if you take out $20,000, you're taking out $160,000 by the time you're 60. Because money tends to double every seven years. Over 30 years, figure it out, $20,000, $160,000. That's why a lot of people at age 60 don't have the money because they dipped in early for an emergency. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of people who don't, not only don't understand the rule of the 78, but they don't understand about saving in, in, in general. Or in this country, there are a lot of people who, you know, never got exposed to that at all. And they were on the, you know, the, 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 hamster, the hamster wheel, right. you know, all of their productive lives and, yes. and never had any either aspirations or success in, in building wealth. And the question I put to you, this is not an easy question, 
So what about them? They don't have any money. They're, they're still in trouble. And they've been in trouble financially all their lives. Now they're in, you know, they're in disrupt aging, if you will. Can they disrupt aging as well as somebody who has some money? Probably not. I mean, well, it depends on your definition. There's always a way you can serve your community and find a sense of purpose, but your choices are definitely broader if you have more resources. So a couple things that we're doing. One, we're trying to educate people about Social Security and how it works. Um, half of people in Hawaii take their Social Security early, which means they receive a reduced benefit for life. So just letting people know the implications of that. The second thing is looking at ways for people in the private sector in Hawaii to save for retirement. Over half of employees of private small businesses here in Hawaii don't even have an auto IRA. That is totally tragic. Yeah, and we know That's so unfair. We know that people who do have that are 15 times more likely to save. So how can we work with small business to set something up for those folks so that they have an opportunity to save for retirement? Did you find a re re receptivity? I mean, is that people respond to that? Small business responds to that when you suggest that? You know, them? I've done a number of listening sessions with small business, and many of them didn't even know they could offer an auto. IRA where they didn't have to be the fiduciary. Yeah. So I think part of it is they're small. They're not thinking about the HR side of things. So part of it's education. We're also um, trying to pass a resolution at the legislature to get a work group together to look at ways to make it easy for them. So this is something that's moving right now. That's very productive. Yeah. It's a good idea. So what, what, about, what about the fellow who you know, gets to retirement age and you know, his job is gone uh, and his work, the work chapter is over? Uh, and he doesn't have a lot of money. Uh, what does he do, Mike? You know, I, I've been very lucky, so I didn't have to face that personally. But I do know from supporting community colleges like the KCC that those people who can go back to school and get some type of technical skill, it's tougher because you don't have the same mental acuity maybe at 60 that you did at 30. Speak so for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I'm out of here. Uh, but um, it, it, the concept of the purpose of education and it is tough sometimes when you get to be 60 65 you've been beaten down so much it's hard to get that energy to, to come back up I know you run into that all the time but school is such a wonderful democratizing effect isn't it it is the, the community school, you colleges can be smart again you can learn you can be you can lifelong learner and you think you, you have to dedicate you have, yourself to you that. have to expect to work I think to 70 72 now I think that should be the new uh, normal 7072 is yeah. the time you work. And that's why you should hold up on taking Social Security until you're 70 well, or 70 at least 71. Yes. Yeah. And one thing to know, um, there actually is brain research that shows that older adults can learn just as well as younger adults. It takes a little bit longer, but they can continue to form new brain cells, so there's no reason why they can't learn a new skill in later and life. They can have gratification out of it. See. Exactly. So even exactly. if they're not as quick, they can still get the gratification that keeps you going. Sure, yeah. sure. Let's talk about medicine for a minute, okay? A few minutes medicine. Sure. Okay, forget what happened in Washington and what's going to happen in Washington. You know, I think we can expect in during this administration a lot of thrills and spills and rocky roads on that. But, you know, if, if I hit retirement age, the natural human species effect is I start to slow down physically. And my body, like the deacon's chariot, begins to come apart and the wheels come off, okay? And this could be a bad day. It could be, a, you know, demoralizing at the least and maybe worse than that. It could be damn depressing, if you, if you will. Can so I reframe that for you? <laughs> Please. Why don't you ask the question you think I should ask you? <laughs> so I think Mike would agree that one thing um, about health when you reach the midpoint or later is that, first of all, you got to use it or lose it. But second of all, people realize it's finite. And so you see people willing to work at it more. I did a workshop for a local employer yesterday and talked about disrupt aging. And all the people over 50 said they felt healthier today than they did when they were in their because 30s. Because they're paying attention. Because now they're exercising. Now they're yeah. making it a point. So, I, and I think Mike mentioned that after he retired was when he regained his health. Yeah, my yeah, numbers. You look pretty slim to yeah, me, by the way. Yeah, my, my, number, my health numbers are better today at 74 than we're at 59. My blood pressure is, is better. My cholesterol is better. My sugar thing is, is, is better. I'll never get diabetes. Uh, and I was the opposite. I became more active when I retired and took the time of it. 
And when I watch TV, I got a little step thing I do at home, and I got a stretch thing I do. So I try to take dead time. I biked here today. A lot of people don't like biking. I used to deliver telegrams. I was 17, so I'm used to biking. <laughs> Back to the good old days. Back yeah. to the good old days. You, know, you retire. <laughs> and you say, what are you doing? I got a bike. Telegrams. But, but, uh, yeah, telegram. Remember telegram. So I think it's you, like the group you had. You can stay active, and you never know, like I say, when the last day is, but I'm going to pretend I got 10 to 15 more active years and act accordingly. That's the ideal, and that's what to strive right. for. And I'm sure that's what you know. This book is about: disrupt aging, disrupt aging, just the process yeah. of deterioration, disrupt that. But you know, a lot of people out there they don't disrupt aging. Medically. You know what? There are a lot of younger people that are obese and unfit as well. Um, my father ran his first marathon at 50. My husband, who's right on the brink there, just this year after us being married for quite a long time and him not ever exercising, he started swimming. He swam. You seven, really got to him. He didn't swam you? seven <laughs> miles last month. That's the equivalent of running 28 miles, and he's very consistent. So I think it's that mortality, the understanding that you got to take charge of your health. So the other points in this book are really about first we need to change our health systems so that instead of people being passive patients in the healthcare system that they're active consumers. They shop around for shoes, why don't they shop around for health? And how can they empower themselves with learning about health? So one of our panels we're featuring um, this is at the Book and Music Festival. Yes, yeah, so we're featuring Dr. Virginia Pressler, who oh, yeah, she's invented great. She's great. the. Um, she's in great shape too. The mini medical school uh -huh. at Jabscom, mm -hmm. which is a great opportunity for older adults to educate themselves about all kinds of aspects of aging. Right, we're having. Um, Joy Barua, who's the Director of Government Relations with Kaiser, and he'll be talking about how the health systems are changing to accommodate that. So we just have a lot of meat around the health topic and probably could have put seven panels together just on that one. Well, I think, you know, what you're doing, not, not only in terms of educating them about how they can improve their own prospects, but getting this 37 million people together, was that I got the right number? Mm -hmm. Was it 130, 30, <laughs> 37 million uh, together so that they become a political force um, so that they, you know, try hopefully to structure some kind of national system which approximates, you know, better systems in other countries so we can all enjoy that as a matter of, a matter of routine, you know, instead of something special uh, that we can all assume in our lives that we're paying in to get health out when we need it, yeah. But I, I want to ask you this question. <clears throat> so you're writing, you're doing AARP, reaching you know, what is 150,000 people here in the state. Um, and um, there's actually a million people in the state, maybe 1.3 in total. Yeah. Uh, not all of them are healthy. Not all of them understand what we are talking about here today. So it's a market. You're into marketing, right? Um, so how do we reach that market to make this, to make this effective? How do we change little minds and big minds all around the state so they understand these concepts on a large statewide scale here in Hawaii, nay. Well, I think we got to start the conversation, but I also think the baby boomers, they disrupt, they disrupt everything, right? They're disrupting they're, aging they're, with they're, or without absolutely. AARP. We're, we're naming it and they're doing it, right? They're reinventing it as they go along. And so what we're trying to do is create a movement around it. Um, part of disrupt aging is changing the rules. If they're not working for us the way they are, let's change them. You know, we're building a big rail system. Why can't we have adult daycare centers and kid daycares right near the rail station so that if you're caring for a parent, you can drop your parent off as you're going into work. If you're dropping off your child, you can put them there while you're going to work. Why can't we do things like that yeah. to improve our community systems so that they support yeah, it's us? it's a whole way you know? of thinking, and it's a way of dealing with the community and the government, yeah? Yeah, so, so I think a lot of people, when they think about aging, if they are aging, they don't want to talk about it because they are in denial of it. And what Joanne Jenkins is saying is, let's not deny aging. Let's embrace the possibilities and then work together to overcome what those challenges may be. Yeah, here in Hawaii, we can mm -hmm. do stuff. You guys are important to us because we, if you hadn't noticed, have an expanding bell curve. Mm -hmm. And we're, I've noticed. You know, our population <laughs> is getting, getting mm, larger at the larger levels. So, okay, uh, how about you, Michael? What would you add to that? 
Well, what I would add to it is that if you want to do anything, you have to read or feed your mind. When I was a salesperson, I told people how to close sales, and they should read about it. I subscribe to seven different health uh, publications, newsletters. Just in some of it's the same stuff all the time to remind me what to do. So people have to make the commitment, and you have to feed the commitment. So if you're 60 years old and you're not subscribing to anything on health, you probably have not made the commitment to live healthy for 10 more years. Yeah. And you've accepted the fact that you're going to have problems before you're 70, and you, that's just part of dying. I don't accept that. I don't think you, you, you have to accept it. But you have to feed your mind positive stuff about health. You talked about horizons, and you talk about 10 years after 74. Okay, I make you 84 now. You're 84. You can be 84, too. Okay. okay? Life begins at 84, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're a little more frail than you were at 74. Maybe you don't have the energy to do the kinds of, you know, that's exercise right. and Probably whatnot. Not. How does your thinking change at 84? Well, I'm not there yet, but what I hope to do is what the same as now. Today might be my last day, but at 84, I'm going to have to do the best I can that particular day. I'm lucky. You know, I'm writing the book. I worked with a lot of people that are octetarians, even some of the people in the early 90s. I went with one to New Orleans, his 90th, 93rd birthday. It, he was still very active. He went to the Harvard University once a week to work on cell research. So I don't think 84 is the end. Uh, Dr. Mortimer Adler, who wrote the great books of the Western world, was still writing stuff in his 90s. Okay, and one day he hits, he hits the wall. Everybody hits the Everybody wall. Everybody hits the but wall. But why so don't you just wait till you hit the wall when and not exactly. start thinking you're going to hit the wall right. and give up? There will be exactly. a time. We all know that. So when you hit the wall, you hit what, the wall. What, what's your mental state? It should be, perhaps, I'm just yeah. throwing this out for you, perhaps it should be, well, I did a pretty good job at this. I, I extended yeah. my life by at least 10 years. I, I listened to Mike, um, and, and, and frankly, uh, it, all, it, it all helped me. And I knew I had the wall, but the wall's further away, so I had a better time. Is that what you're talking well, about? Well, how about this? How about instead of that, you say, I got to do things that mattered to me. You know, I, I really did what I wanted to do in my life. I think a lot of people don't get to that right, spot. Other chapter. Right. I admire that. Yeah. In other chapter. And a 10 year old today, by the way, has a 50% chance of living to 104. So we might as well start pa I'm planning so out yes. past the 80s. Of those people. <laughs> and we might be one of the early ones. <laughs> we could. We could. <laughs> We're out of time, Jackie. So let me uh, ask you to look at camera one and tell them how they can find out about AERP and the Book and Music Festival and what they should do from this point forward. Let them have it. Well, please go to aerp.org slash hi, and you will see information about the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. We will take pre-registrations for a Joanne Jenkins keynote. You can just stop by the Aging, Disrupt Aging Pavilion on Sunday, but you can find out all about it at aerp.org slash hi. I'll be there. Mike, you'll be there. I'll be there. We'll all see each other together that yes, day. Thank you so much for coming down. You guys. Thank you, Jay. Thanks Appreciate for having it. us. This has been fun. <laughs>